Come Thanksgiving, two pies come into heavy rotation, pumpkin and pecan. And they actually have quite a bit in common. They're both single crust pies and their egg-based fillings are prone to some of the same pitfalls. In this episode, I'll show you how to pre-bake single crusts before they're filled, blend a custard filling so it won't crack, and how to tell when these pies are done. Blind baking is key to some of my favorite single crust pies, like pecan or pumpkin. Blind baking means partially or sometimes fully baking a pie crust before you add the filling. It's important for custard pies to give the crust a head start at a higher temperature before adding the filling and reducing the temperature in the oven to continue cooking the filling. This keeps the crust from getting soggy. So before we start the fillings, I'm going to get this crust into the oven to blind bake. I've rolled out the dough and fit it into the pie plate, just as I did for the double crust pie. But instead of trimming off to a half an inch, I'm going to trim this single one just to about three quarters of an inch, a little bit more than I did with the double crust. And you simply go around the pie. Crimping this pie is very similar to what we did on our double crust apple pie. As you can see, I am rolling, but I'm not pulling the dough. That can be problematic and cause some shrinkage. Okay, now we're ready to crimp. My favorite crimping technique is, I think, one of the easiest ones. Just very simply, put two fingers on the outside of the crust and put your index finger inside and gently push the two together. Forms a little scallop edge. Nothing too severe, nothing too pointed. I'm also being careful that I don't push the dough into the pie plate, keeping it, again, on top of that nice rim. Okay, now the crust is ready to go into the fridge or the freezer and chill it until it's nice and firm before we're ready to blind bake. Before we put the chilled crust in the oven to blind bake, we need to make sure that we weight it down to keep the sides standing up and to keep the bottom from puffing up. I use pie weights. You can use ceramic ones that you can buy at any restaurant supply store, or you can use a collection of old dried beans and uncooked rice. These will keep forever, and you can use them again and again. So to blind bake, we're going to press a large piece of foil into the bottom and up the sides of the chilled pie dough. As you can see, I'm really pressing quite firmly on this because the dough is so hard it's not making any indentation. I'm going to use a second piece of foil in a cross pattern so that I make sure that I cover all the sides and our pretty crimped top. And now, I'm just going to pile in our weights. So you can see I'm adding a lot of them because I want to make sure to not only cover the bottom to prevent it from puffing up, but I want to make sure that we push it up against the sides and all the way up to the top to give more support to the sides while the crust is baking. We bake the pie with the pie weights at 425 for about 12 minutes. So at this point, we're going to take the pie weights and the foil out from the crust. You can use pot holders for this if you want to because the foil is a little hot. Pop them foil and all back into a bowl or a container. This crust is for the pumpkin pie. So before I put it back into the oven to get some nice golden color on the crust, I'm going to add a ginger praline layer to the bottom. When it's cool, it'll give a nice crunch and added flavor boost to the pumpkin filling. And press it down a little bit. Doesn't need to be perfect or even. And back into the oven it goes. So while our crusts are cooling, we're going to make the fillings. Let's start with the pecan filling. I've melted together the chocolate, the maple syrup, the corn syrup, and the butter until it's nice and smooth. It's really important you cool it to room temperature before you add the eggs. Otherwise, you run the risk of actually scrambling or cooking the eggs when you add it to the mixture. OK, let's add the eggs and the Kahlua. It smells great. 
And we're going to whisk this together until combined, well combined, but not over whisk it because we don't want to aerate the mixture for fear of puffing up the filling too much while it cooks. That can cause it to crack. You can see how gelatinous and thick this mixture is when you pick up the whisk a little bit. It has a great consistency. This looks like it's good to go. Just going to pour this filling directly into the crust, scraping to get all the good stuff. And now I'm going to scatter over some toasted and cooled pecan halves. I do it randomly. If you want to, though, feel free to be a little bit more organized about it. You can substitute toasted walnut halves as well. I'm just making sure I have a nice even layer without being too meticulous about it. Okay, now the pie's ready to go back into the oven. We're baking this pie at 350 degrees. Remember, that's a lower temperature than we blind baked at. Okay, now for our pumpkin filling. And this is even easier to pull together. Start with canned pumpkin puree. This is not the seasoned pumpkin puree, just plain pumpkin. Brown sugar, flour, salt, and my spices. I'm adding cloves, cinnamon, and ground ginger. Pretty traditional pumpkin pie spices. So now we're just gonna whisk these ingredients together until they're well blended and there are no sugar lumps remaining. There we go. That looks great. Now we're going to add our eggs, heavy cream, and vanilla extract. And we're going to whisk this together too. Again, we don't want to over whisk because that will cause the eggs to aerate, which can ultimately lead to cracking once it's fully baked. We do not want to use a handheld mixer for this or do anything more than just whisk until well blended. There we go. It's that easy. So when my pie crust is cooled and the praline has hardened, I'm ready to pour in the pumpkin filling. Get one last brief stir and then pour it in. Now this pie is ready to go into a 325 degree oven. Remember, again, this is a lower temperature than we blind baked it at. It's important with both of these pies not to over bake them. That can contribute to cracking. So we'll check for some doneness on our pecan pie. First off, I can see that the edges are slightly puffed up. That looks good. And now I'm gonna jiggle the pan a bit and see if the center jiggles a bit, just like that. Pecan pie is done. Just like the pecan, we're going to check for doneness on the pumpkin pie, making sure that the center jiggles when the pie is nudged slightly, not slosh around. Just like that, pie looks great. Don't worry if you think the center isn't cooked enough. As it cools, it will set. Now we're gonna cool both of these pies until they're room temperature, and then we're gonna slice and serve them with some sweetened whipped cream.